Hi guys, in this video I will show you how I laser cut deep run on my K40 laser cutter. The first thing I did was to install K40 Whisperer instead of the stock software that came with the machine. I haven't tried the stock software, but those who have say that K40 Whisperer is so much better. All I can say is that it works for me and does the job, so this is what I've done. Okay, the first thing I've done hardware-wise was to remove the bed and the clamp. Then I bought a lap jack. And on top of that, I have a honeycomb bed. Then I have a piece of MDF. And then finally I have my D-Pron. Then I performed a ramp test. I've adjusted my lap jack so that the distance between my laser head and my D-Pron is correct so that the laser is hitting the D-Pron with the tightest beam possible. So, we have our MDF, we have our D-Pron. Now D-Pron has a natural slight curve in it. I think that's just how it's made. So we want to find that curve. Maybe you can see that on camera. We want to make sure that as we put it on to the MDF, that the center piece of the D-Pron is touching the MDF and then it's the corners that bend up. Because what we're going to do, we're just going to grab some weights and then make sure that the corners stay down. And uh, when we position our, um, our design in K40 Whisperer, we just want to make sure that whatever we put our weights, that's not part of where we were cutting. So in this way, the D-Pron is going to stay flat. The laser is not going to hit the D-Pron at an angle. It's going to have the same distance no matter where we're cutting it. So that's, um, that's the way I do it. Um, another benefit of putting the weights in is making sure that the D-Pron stays in place. I have ruined a cut where uh, the D-Pron moved for some reason. I don't know what happened, but that happened since. It has not happened since I've started putting weights and making sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Settings. I'm using 2.5 milliamps. In K40 Whisper, I'm setting the speed to 30 millimeters per second. And then I do four passes to get a full cut. Now, already on the third pass, some of the parts are cut 100%, but on the fourth, everything's cut. So this means, especially on the fourth run, that there's a lot of excess energy that's going to go through the D-Pron and hit what's, whatever's under it. And that's where the MDF comes in, because if I just were to use the honeycomb bed, then I would get reflections that would hit the underside of D-Pron and do unwanted cuts and marks. So that's what the MDF is. It's just to absorb any excess energy. So really, I'm not using the, um, the honeycomb bed for this project. I could just have used a, um, a thick, flat piece of wood uh, instead of the, the bed and the MDF. So that would be the bed and the absorber of excess energy. All right, let's do some cutting. Um, I'm going to cut, just like I said, 2.5 milliamps, 30 millimeters per second, and then uh, this is the first pass. Cutting. All right, so I'm cutting a uh, first pass here. See if I can angle the camera so you, can, you guys can see what's going on. It's kind of hard. So this is what it looks like after the first pass. Pretty good. Very um, narrow curve. Great detail, but not very deep as expected. So we're just going to do it three more times and then we're done. Now, I will have to start all over because I'm not going to be able to, to realign this at the exact same spot. So I'm just going to take a fresh sheet and then run it four times and then I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the fourth pass. It's just about to finish. And uh, then we can inspect the, uh, the parts that we've cut. And uh, from the looks of it, it looks pretty good. All right, it's done. I'm just gonna shut it off. Open it up. And here we are. Let's have a look.
All right, clearly these been cut away completely. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take them off. Whoops. So these are kind of boring. These are just some some strips that I I need. Just gonna put those aside for a second. Yeah. All right. So we have some very light light uh, jarring, yellow ish. Um, let's see. They just come come right off. Yeah. I'm gonna probably gonna need a pin for the uh, the small ones. But the curve, I don't know if you can get it. It's nice. It's quite smooth. And uh, yeah, these are parts that will be going into my uh, my wing, my uh, RC airplane wing. So I just need to cut uh, some more, and then um, I can build myself uh, build myself a wing. Now, I want to give you an example of how precise this laser can be when we're cutting deeper on. So here's uh, some parts that are going to be part of the tail. And I made some holes in this piece here and some small, um, I guess you call it stops in this part. And I've, I've, I've accounted for the curve in my design. So these ones fit really well together. And um, this just means that I've created a strong bond already and I can use less glue in my final assembly. Um, yeah, so I think that's a great example of how precise that this uh, machine uh, can, uh, can produce uh, parts in. All right, so um, I'm gonna go build this wing, but um, lastly, I wanna mention if you guys uh, have suggestions to how I can improve my cutting and um, any comments whatsoever, because I think it'd be cool to uh, to, to to learn uh, any um, any other methods or any other things that, that you guys might do. So please uh, drop me a note. And um, if you found this video helpful, I um, I'd highly appreciate it if you gave it a like. But um, yeah, that's all for now. Cheers.